Hey guys, happy Wednesday. It's Daryl here. It is 6 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I want to talk briefly. I've been not particularly wanting to talk about this offensive statement that Donald Trump made about a few bad apples and some police choking. Uh, how he compared all of the incidents of just say just the ones that have happened this year involving uh, black men losing their lives. Uh, Ahmaud Arbery, the, the black jogger, uh, George Floyd. Um, Breonna Taylor. And he, he, he credits this, he says, it's just a few bad apples and they're choking, they choke. He, he's comparing it to a golfer missing a three foot putt. That's, uh, you know, as soon as I saw that, it's just, it's one of those moments where I don't think I can be surprised by the offense anymore if, Offensive things that Trump says, and then he says something that's even more offensive than I can believe, and it happens again. This is one of those times, um, like George Floyd. Let's say, let's talk about George Floyd. Um, so Trump claims it's just a few bad apples. Cho you know, they're choking, they're panicking. I guess it's the pressure of the job. So. I don't know, I, I'm not a psychologist, but I look at that officer's face that's kneeling on George Floyd's neck, and it, I, I've been around for 54 years, I'm pretty good, you know, I'm pretty good by now at, at judging uh, people's intent and the look on their face, and I look at that police officer's face, and he certainly doesn't look like he's panicking at all. He looks pretty damn comfortable with his knee on George Floyd's neck. Uh, he does not look like he's having a moment of panic uh, of uh, adrenaline he, he looks all too comfortable standing sitting there with his knee on uh he, he almost has a look of disgust or uh i don't even know what to call it uh i hate to say this the look on his face is almost the look you get when you smell something rotting in the refrigerator that's the look i see on that cop's face um uh, let's talk about brianna taylor just this week, it's come out that the prosecutor, one of the prosecutors in the case, has was trying to, uh, he, wrote, he wrote up some drafts. They weren't directly mailed to the court, so he's kind of skated on this. He's gotten by on it, but he, he was offering plea deals to defendants that were related to the case. Uh, so the, the drug suspect that they were initially looking for, that did not live at Brianna Taylor's house, she had, apparently she may have dated him before, the man she was living with at that house. And the prosecutor's offering this, this dealer uh, plea bargains that he could walk instead of doing 10 years, a possible 10-year bid, if he would just dirty up Brianna a little bit, just implicate her in his dealings, make it look like she was part of it, like kind of validating the cops going in there and subsequently shooting a sleeping woman. Um, oh, by the way, Brianna Taylor worked as a, an, uh, an ER technician. Um, I, I was in that, I was in that world for 22 years. Uh, I, I daily, I associated with, with dealers, uh, runners, dealers, suppliers. Um, let me tell you this, uh, none of them held nine to five jobs. I can tell you that once they started making any kind of money, uh, not, not, not one of the people I knew that worked in that world held a nine to five job. Just a fact I know. But anyway, so this prosecutor is trying to dirty up a, a girl that's passed away. Uh, I don't even understand why he would do that. It's not to bring a case against her. You can't bring a case against a, a person that's no longer living. So why would he be giving an actual dealer a walk, letting him off 10 years, giving this guy who's actually a known dealer, putting him back out on the street in an effort to make a person that's no longer living look bad to implicate her? Why would you do that? Because obviously you can't arrest somebody that's no longer living, so it seems insane. You're letting this one person go who was the subject of your initial investigation, a known dealer, and you're letting him walk and go back out on the street to continue his business, dealing to whoever, kids, I don't know. You're putting him back out on the street. 
in an effort to make more of a case against a person who's no longer living. This is ju- is this justice? Is this law and order? Is this protecting the United States citizens? Letting the subject of your investigation go back to continue his illegal activities so that you can make an ER technician that your officers accidentally took the life of so you can make your officers look a little more justified in their reckless shooting. This is, this is law and order. This is Trump's America. I don't know. Is that, is that prosecutor choking? Is, is he choking like, you know, that three-foot putt that, that Trump's talking about? I doubt it. I don't think he can choke. I don't, it certainly doesn't look that way. It looks like a very bad decision, but it doesn't look like he's choking. What about um, Ahmaud Arbery, the black jogger? We all know the story, what happened. Some white folks saw him jogging by every day and apparently thought he looked like a criminal. Chased him down with a shotgun. Ended up taking his life. And those, those gentlemen, even though they chased him down and took his life, they claimed self-defense. And they weren't arrested for, I think it was a month. Were those prosecutors, those officials involved in that investigation, were they choking? Were they choking? Were they panicked? That's why they didn't charge these two, these two or, or three gentlemen that chased Ahmad Arbery down? Was that panic? Was it, were, there bad, were there more bad apples that were just choking under the stress of the job? One other thing Trump talked about. He talked about another, this one's ridiculous. Uh, the Black Lives Matter protesters that are on the streets now. He, say, he said this in the last day or two. I, I don't know if it was all in that same interview. Um, that it's some very wealthy, very stupid people that are funding all these protests. Exact quote. So, sometimes I wonder, is he just, is Trump's just so out of it that he doesn't even understand what's going on? He doesn't understand, he doesn't read what the American people are feeling? I don't think that's it. I think it's, a, I think it's an outright attempt to sell a different narrative to his base. I think he knows that his base aren't all that educated. He said before that he loves the uneducated. And I, he knows that these conspiracy theories, they eat him up like that. Like the video I did yesterday about deep state, dozens of deep state shadow people traveling in coach, all in black on a plane. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. All right. Uh, and I could, I could go on and on. Uh, Trump's claims about a few bad apples choking under the pressure. Um, once again, he's not doing the hard work it takes to keep the American people safe, to, to, to keep America actually under law and order with the coronavirus. He, 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 he took the lazy way out with that. Always looking for uh, an, an easy cure uh, or just ignoring it. And he's doing the same thing now with this. Just just blaming it on this or that and looking for an easy way out without doing the work, without doing the actual hard work of sitting down and talking about real discussions, about what's going on, about biases that police have for certain groups of people. It, it's, 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 it's a real thing. It exists. And the bad part of that is that uh, millions of black Americans have to live their lives in fear when their kids go out, when they go out, whenever they get in a car, whenever they go out in public. And, and that's not freedom. That's not law and order. That's not justice. If even one person in America has to live that way, and they live there, a good person, a good law-abiding person living every day in fear, then we all suffer from that. Just some thoughts on Trump's claims about bad apples and choking. All right, you guys have a good Wednesday.